Most companies succeed and become famous as a result of their great marketing and products. But this isn't always the case. Some businesses become well known as a result of their immoral activities. Stay with us till the end as we tell you about a few of the most evil companies in the world. DuPont. The first company in our list is DuPont. DuPont has been rubbing C8 in the faces of its employees for years. The company uses perfluorooctanoic acid, or PFOA, in making Teflon nonstick pans, Gore-Tex, and other slippery waterproof substances. The material is inexpensive, but incredibly harmful to consume. It even has the potential to cause cancer. In 1953, DuPont began dabbling in the Teflon market by purchasing huge quantities of PFOA from 3M Company. Despite tight instructions from 3M on how to dispose of materials or treat it as chemical waste, DuPont managed to dump hundreds of thousands of pounds of C8 into the Ohio River and bury another 7,100 tons in unlined sludge pits. This occurred as a result of a complicated, almost surreal series of events. Oddly enough, DuPont did not believe 3M's claim that C8 was dangerous. On the contrary, they began a four-decade-long series of tests to prove it. Firstly, their scientists discovered in 1961 that the substance made rats, rabbits, and dogs' livers grow larger. In the 1970s, they noticed that the workers at their Washington Works facility had high levels of C8 in their blood. Then the chemical was discovered to cause birth abnormalities in rats in 1981. Even at that point, they made the decision to proceed forward with human trials. Corporate scientists kept an eye on seven pregnant employees in DuPont's Teflon section. Two of them had babies with eyesight problems. In 1984, DuPont discovered that C8 was spreading far more widely than they had anticipated. The fine powder could be found well beyond their property line, as well as in the water supply of the nearby areas. By the 1990s, they had discovered that C8 is linked to a variety of malignancies. However, because DuPont's Teflon business was worth billions of dollars, they continued to use it. C8 causes a wide range of health problems, from cancer to high cholesterol, pregnancy issues, thyroid illness, and ulcerative colitis in people. Then in 2012, as a result of seven-year research conducted by third-party scientists, the products using C8 were banned, but it was too late for many of the workers. DuPont is now currently facing numerous multi-million dollar lawsuits, and it's going to be pretty hard to spin around what they did. Dow Chemicals. Dow Chemicals has been producing hazardous chemicals that have been harming the environment and human health for years. The company is the parent firm of Union Carbide, which was responsible for the Bhopal gas disaster, which resulted in the deaths of almost 500,000 people due to toxic chemicals. It was the worst industrial tragedy in history, and the compensation paid was zero dollars. The company's CEO is now dead, but following the horrific tragedy, he fled India for his home nation of the United States, and he was never extradited to face trial in India due to his strong lobbying in the United States. DuPont is currently facing a slew of multi-million dollar lawsuits, and it'll be difficult to justify what they did. Monsanto. The next one in our list is Monsanto. The company was a biotechnology firm based in St. Louis, Missouri, United States. The company sparked a drive toward genetically modified crops and food crops that are larger, grow faster, and can withstand chemical treatment without dying. Apart from the fact that GMO crops were largely untested, and after a study, it was found that rats fed GMO maize diet were six times more likely to die. Monsanto's herbicides have also been criticized for wiping out millions of acres of cropland, and its chemicals have been included on blacklists of products linked to cancer and other illnesses. Monsanto was convicted in 2002 of dumping tens of thousands of pounds of PCBs into Anniston, Alabama's waterways before lying about it for years. As a result, the harmful pollutant reached the highest levels ever recorded in history. Furthermore, the introduction of Monsanto's genetically altered BT cotton in India has been connected to a major worsening in the country's conditions for small farmers. American Cyanamid Co. During the four years between 1996 and 2000, many pesticide companies in the United States exported a bit more than a billion pounds of chemical pesticides to third world countries. Ironically, most of those pesticides were known carcinogens in the United States, but it was still legal to manufacture and export as long as they weren't used in the country. As a result, these chemicals came into touch with approximately 350 million agricultural workers in places like Africa and Central America. The American Cyanamid Co. benefited greatly from this and sold a huge amount of pesticide called Counter in Costa Rica. This pesticide contained organophosphate, which was previously employed in the production of nerve gas during World War II. Counter was only allowed to be handled if gloves, a face mask, and eye protection were worn. 
However, the uneducated Costa Rican farmers worked shirtless and dispersed the pesticides with their bare hands. At night, it was common for them to use full bags of counter as pillows. As a result, the workers were practically vomiting blood and foaming at the mouth after a few days due to the chemicals that had found their way into their bodies. This has become a norm as every day corporations like American Cyanamid and Chevron Chemical Company transport about 10 million pounds of these chemicals out of the country to countries that supply almost a fifth of the food sold in America, freshly coated with illegal pesticides. Rio Tinto Rio Tinto is a mining business based primarily in Africa and you can probably guess where this is headed. As the world's largest private mining firm, they provide much of the world's raw aluminum, copper, uranium, gold, and diamonds. Rio Tinto has the worst human rights record in history, and they have continued operating like this for decades. The company is also said to have its own private mercenary army to keep blacks from rebelling against the company and the government. Furthermore, according to the United Nations Council that dealt with the issue, the uranium mines use cruel slave labor, no matter what, the company has continued to pummel humans in the environment at every turn. In 1981, it was discovered that workers at one of its Canadian uranium mines had been exposed to radiation levels more than seven times the legal limit for years. They have tortured and killed opponents of their gold mines in Indonesia. In addition, an ex-security guard at their gold mine in Brazil disclosed in 2000 that security personnel were encouraged to use violence in order to keep the miners calm. All in all, it's essentially a form of modern-day slavery. Purdue Pharma. The next one on our list is Purdue Pharma, the manufacturer of OxyContin, which was the first widely prescribed extended release opioid medicine. Over the years, Purdue earned more than $30 billion in opioid sales, enriching the Sackler family who owns the corporation. However, since 1999, overdoses from these prescription painkillers and illegal narcotics like heroin and fentanyl have claimed the lives of around 450,000 people in the United States. As a result of these fatalities, 2,000 lawsuits have been filed against the pharmaceutical manufacturer, aiming to make opioid manufacturers and distributors pay for the harm they caused. Consequently, the Sackler family then filed for bankruptcy to discuss and settle the thousands of claims filed by U.S. citizens. In view of such demanding evidence, Purdue pleaded guilty to criminal charges for misbehavior with its opioids as part of a settlement with the Justice Department and agreed to pay more than $8 billion in fines, the majority of which will go unpaid. The company's owners just paid $225 million to resolve legal claims and were not even criminally charged. Nestle The last one on our list is Nestle, the world's leading food and beverage corporation, has long demonstrated a commitment to improving people's lives and contributing to a healthier future. It has, however, been a part of a slew of scandals including slave labor, starvation, and potentially harmful formulations. The global corporation is also one of the most boycotted companies in the world, following reports of labor rights violations at its factories in several nations. Since its inception in the 1970s, Nestle's entire philosophy was honorable and humanitarian. It was designed to be a breath of fresh air for newborns whose moms were unable to breastfeed them, and by all accounts it succeeded. However, because their target audience was so limited in contrast to the general population, they needed to find a means to grow. And in order to do so, they had to contend with fierce competition. As a result, a massive effort was launched, with medical professionals engaged to not just recommend Nestle formula as a viable option, but also to smear breast milk's reputation. Salespeople were outfitted in medical garb and whisked off to less educated and underdeveloped parts of the world, such as Africa, to shout their products' praises. As a result of this, malnutrition was clearly on the rise, and because the majority of Africans at the time were illiterate, they were hit the hardest by it. Apart from the fact that the milk formula was nutritionally deficient, the water in most African countries was filthy, and instead of the company instructing the doctor sent there to teach the locals to boil the water before using it, the company slapped the instructions on the container casually, knowing full well that the majority of the people couldn't read. This was clearly done to avoid a lawsuit rather than because they cared about their customers. These actions resulted in a number of newborns becoming ill and dying, particularly in Africa. This grew to a point where the Nestle executives were summoned by the Senate in 1978 to explain themselves, with their explanation being that they did write the instructions on the back of the container. This was one of the reasons that prompted the United Nations to prohibit firms from attempting to equate their infant formula to breast milk. Despite its murky past, Nestle remains the world's largest food manufacturer and employs more than 300,000 people, along with operating almost 380 factories in more than 190 countries. Even though the CEOs have freely confessed that 60% of their products are unhealthy, the public still loves the brand unconditionally. Well, that's it for today's video. We hope you enjoyed the content of the video. 
If you did, show some love and hit that like button, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you never miss out on any of the amazing videos we have in store for you.